okay, is to name and write formulas. I don't know why my pen, there it is, for ionic compounds. And this includes simple bi binary ionic compounds. That just means two elements involved. Ionic compounds that contain the transition metals. That's the middle part of the periodic table. And ionic compounds that it contain something called polyatomic ions. As the name implies, there's more than one atom in that ion. You should be able to name and write formulas for simple covalent compounds at the end of this unit as well. And then finally, to identify covalent and ionic compounds from their names or their formulas or their physical properties. And then we will also add some uh, more mole conversions at the end of the unit. So yay, that's what we're going to be doing. All right. So. This current uh, lesson, I should say, uh, lesson objectives. We're going to define what is a bond. We're going to determine the number of valence electrons in an atom. This is going to be based on the position in the periodic table. You may already know this. Composition in the periodic table. And we're going to learn to draw something called electron dot symbols, also known as Lewis structures for an atom. Okay, so what is a chemical bond? Which electrons are involved in bonding? And why do atoms form these chemical bonds? Well, first, a chemical bond is an attractive force holding two or more atoms together in a chemical compound. As you know, in the middle of the atom is the nucleus, which is positive, surrounded by the electron cloud, which is negative, it doesn't, it should be more circular, okay. And there is an attractive force between these electrons and another atom's nucleus, and for that other atom's electrons with this atom's nucleus forms that attraction. There is also in an ionic bond the attraction between a cation, a positive ion, and an anion, which is a negative ion. Chemistry, as you hopefully will discover, is really all about attractive and repulsive forces between positive and negative things. So which electrons are involved in bonding? Okay. Valence electrons. These are the electrons that are the outermost energy level. Okay, So the electrons in the outermost energy level. Um, if you go to an old model of the atom that looks like this, okay, and we have electrons in these different levels, The electrons that are going to be on the outermost energy level are the ones that are going to encounter other atoms. So it's the ones on the outside that are really going to hit into other atoms and be able to form these bonds. The electrons on the inside don't, don't bump into the other atoms. Why do atoms form these chemical bonds? <clears throat> atoms and molecules and different substances in our world really do what they do to become more stable. Okay, more stable. Oops, oh dear. More stable means lower energy state. Okay, so uh, in physics you may have learned that potential energy increases uh, if you raise a book, say, in the air. And that book, if you let it go, is going to go and hit the ground because its potential energy strives to be lower, to be more stable. For this introductory chemistry course, we'll talk about something called the octet rule. Atoms will generally gain, lose, or share electrons to have eight valence electrons. Hydrogen, helium are stable with just two. This also actually applies to um, lithium. Uh, and let's add beryllium. Okay, although beryllium does some um, 
doesn't always follow the rules, but those four elements uh, actually are stable with just two electrons in their outermost energy level. <clears throat> so how do we know how many valence electrons an atom has? Probably in a previous course you've talked about this. Okay. Um, might as well just go here. All right. In this first column or group in the periodic table, this is group one, and it turns out that elements are really arranged because every element in this first group has one valence electron. This is group two, and it has two valence electrons. Similarly, this is either group three, sometimes referred to as group 13. Okay, we don't pay or we're not going to talk about these elements too much yet because they don't quite follow the same rules as the elements do in the first two groups and then in groups either 3 through 8 or 13 through 18. Okay, um, It just depends on the periodic table you use, what group numbers these are. All right, But these group numbers do give us the number of valence electrons that those atoms have. Helium is an exception that you do need to know. Even though it's in this group eight, it is it only has two electrons in its outermost energy level. It is in this group because it, it acts like every other element in this group. Um, and we'll find out in a future lesson why this makes sense, all right? So if it's labeled 13 through 18, number of valence electrons are equal to the group number minus 10. Or if they're labeled 3 through 8, the group number is equal to the number of valence electrons except for that helium. All right, so just by the location on the periodic table tells you the number of valence electrons for these two groupings on the periodic table. Lewis dot structures. We will find that it's useful to draw a Lewis dot structure to represent the valence electrons that an atom has. And these are examples. How do we get to those examples? What are the rules to draw these Lewis structures? Well, first we have to determine the number of valence electrons for each atom. This we're going to do by looking on the periodic table, what group the element is in, and that gives us the valence electrons. We're going to add one electron to each side before we double up on those electrons, only putting two electrons on each side. And as you draw them, what you want to do is you want to kind of envision that there is a box around this symbol and only two electrons on each side of the box. So let's look at a couple of examples. Let's look at, well, let's use one that we just saw. Let's look at lithium. Find lithium on the periodic table. Oh, it's right here. It is in group one, so it has one valence electron. I would draw the lithium's electron dot symbol like that. You could also draw lithium's dot symbol like this. You could put the dot on the bottom or on the top. It doesn't really matter. Let's then look at nitrogen. Find nitrogen on the periodic table. It's right here. It's in group one. This is group two, three, four, five. You can also see that it says group 15. So 15 minus 10 is equal to five. That's the number of valence electrons. So in nitrogen, it doesn't really matter where you start. It did in the old days, but not anymore. So one, two, three, four, five would be the Lewis dot structure for nitrogen. Let's take a look now at, let's do chlorine, all right? You may want to pause the screencast just to make sure that you can do this all on your own. I'm going to write the symbol. I'll stop. Okay, so hopefully you tried this on your own. You write the symbol of the element in the center, and then I have, it's in group 17, so it's seven valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that ends the first screencast.